too many tabs open on this thing. Tell it's me a, about it. It's yeah. a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> what do you want to be <laughs> when you grow up? And it's a it's a one minute play, and it's on your blog. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so which one did you want me to do? You're Mr. A. Mr. A, right? A and B. Okay. Yeah, I'll be A and you be okay, B. Thank you. Okay, I can start if you're ready. Yes. Okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? Hmm. Cat burglar of music boxes, captain of an anti-whaling ship, consultant to pataphysicians, biographer of Harry Parch, professor of the accordion, vino vergi, taste tester, apprentice to owls, Benny Goodman scholar, author of children's books about John Brown, inventor of a time machine. Uh, and why that last one? Well, so I could travel back in time and thwart Christopher Columbus before he reached the Americas. I would set a trap for him to fuck up his life so bad he would never cross the ocean. Chris was a very bad man. But that would mean you probably would not exist. Oh, right. Okay, then I would do that one last. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah. A triumph, a theatrical triumph. Oh, everybody's <laughs> applauding. Our virtual audience is applauding right now. I can I can hear the thundering applause from mm, the virtual I can, humans. I feel it. The future applause. <laughs> the future applause. Speaking of time machines, wow. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Jumping around. Uh, let me see if I got <laughs> another one pulled up here. There yeah, was just... a six or ten minute one you sent. Yeah, really there's liked. that one. Um, I let me look at that one right quick because that I would actually like to do it. And yeah. you know, at that point, if we want to call the interview, I think that would be like the last play thing. Um, whether or not we could fit in a song, we'll see. But would you be up for Don't Bread Me? That's the five yeah. or six minute one. Uh -huh. Okay. Don't so, Bread Me. Yeah. So I'm Mr. A in this one and you're Mr. B. Okay. All right. Uh, let me let me just make sure. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And this is, uh, everybody, this is Don't Bread Me by Dan Hanrahan. Also available on my blog, uh, and and these will be produced in other ways. But this is the world world uh, premiere. Well, oh, great! Yeah. I'm glad I could be a part of this. All right, beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> okay, right. so I guess I guess if I may, okay, mm -hmm. it's all right there on the flag. On the flag, the yellow one. Yellow like a rose. Or a forbidden love. A uh, what? What? The flag. The flag shows a coiled snake hissing. And? And? And what is it saying? Don't bread me. Don't bread me? Don't bread me. I don't want to end up in anybody's skillet. No, asshole. It says, don't tread on me. Of course, of course. I know what you're talking about. Um, I know which flag you're talking about. Uh, for some reason, I was picturing the little triangle-shaped flags that they fly on golf courses. Uh, don't tread on me. You mean like with a bicycle tire? <clears throat> a bicycle tire. Yeah, like don't ride your bike over me. I'm trying to catch some rays here. No, you dick. Dan Bungie, don't explain it. It means don't fuck with me, and I won't fuck with you. Get it? Got it. So the idea is that we are each separate snakes coiled and hissing except for the bikes, which are piloted by redcoats or northerners or Black Lives Matter or Antifa. Yeah, or, or Mom Tifa. Right, or Mom Tifa. And so we are a country of coiled and hissing snakes in dirt, ho in dirt holes, sunning ourselves on rocks, as seeing our way through swamps. Well, that's not exactly right because so many American swamps were drained and to make cornfields or slave labor camps or cotton plantations. Okay, so we are a nation of hissing and venomous snakes coiled around cotton plants and corn stalks. And if you fuck with us, individually speaking, the fangs, motherfucker, 
the fangs, bitch. Basically. So, uh, okay, so then what you don't do is ride your bicycle over the snakes because the snakes are the good guys. Okay, so my question is, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah, what do you do? What do you do do? If I'm a snake, what do I do besides wait around to maybe get tread on? Well, (laughs) don't say it like that. Like what? Like it's meaningless, like not not getting tread on. That's a big deal. Dan Bongino put it like this. Don't fuck with me and I won't fuck with you. Fuck with me and I won't fuck with you. What I'm saying is that there... Is there anything I'm supposed to do in my not fucking around with you? I am a snake, and I promise not to fuck with you. Unless you fuck with me. Right, unless you fuck with me. But what else do I do? Building projects? Do I erect a porch on my property? Do I purchase property and then mainly observe it? Sure, that's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with purchasing and observing property as long as... As long as you don't fuck with anybody else. Well? That sounds boring. What? That sounds boring to you. (sighs) Sitting around looking at my property and not fucking with people and not getting fucked with sounds boring. I'm sorry. It's not boring. It's not boring. Not fucking with other people and not getting fucked with by other people is not boring. Okay. And even if it is, it's the best we got. As soon as you stop vigilance, as soon as you let somebody tread on you, fuck with you, get over on you, run a game on you, con you, fool you, bamboozle, bedazzle, shimmy, shake you, piss on you, ramrod you, regale you with gifts, and then fleece you, limit you, as soon as... What? As soon as... As soon as... As soon as... You give somebody your trust, and they burn you, then you ain't shit then, Lester. Are you? Well, you're not shit. You're not not shit. You're a person. So when was it? When was it? When was what? When was it? When did you get taken for a ride? Doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't matter. That's what I said. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happened. If I got taken for a ride, if somebody ran a game on me, it doesn't matter. Right. I know. The fangs, motherfucker. The fangs. That's goddamn right, Charlie. You bet your goddamn ass the fangs. And I'll sink them so far into your neck, you may as well be a wax statue when I'm done with you. Put you in a dinner tux and send you off to Madame Tussauds. Who turned you into wax, Jimmy? Nobody. Nobody turned you into wax? It just happened? Yes, it just happened. And... And who did you bury out over beyond the hill? A bird. I'd been seeing her perched on the post at the end of our road for three days. And I came out one day and she was on the ground. Looked like I could see outer space in her eyes. I took her back home. I brought her back to health. I learned what she needed. Mostly she needed care. She needed somebody to take care of her and give her little bugs and worms to eat. She was getting ready to fly away and someone took her out of the shoe box with grass that I had put her in and I found her dead outside the back door. So I took her over the hill and I buried her there And I came back down the hill and I was made out of wax. Did you ever think that maybe you're a bird and not a rattlesnake? Could be. Could be. 
Hey, more virtual applause. Hey. That was really <laughs> good. You. Yeah, that's fun. It, thank you for doing that. It's really helpful for me as a writer to hear it. It's it's yeah. ambitious because um, I'm I'm you know I've got certain things I'm trying to explore and say, and if you do them too obviously, then it's un, not effective. And so, hearing it helps me. You know, as I as yeah. I it's it's in process. I'll be editing it. But, you know, thank you. That was really super fun to do. Yeah, no, it was fun for me, too. I was like, oh, cool. I haven't done this. <laughs> and, like, I, I think I read, I did plays when I was a kid. I haven't done it's any. It's really kind of fun. It's yeah. such a fun thing to do. I've I've had um, different times where I'll just have, like, a monthly thing with friends where all we do, we pass out scripts and read plays together. It's just super entertaining and it's wild. I mean, the plays have taken me a really long time to understand as a literary form because, and, and so when I started to read Harold Pinter and then understand David Mamet coming out of Harold Pinter, it, it became clear that one of the keys is there's all this things being communicated in between the lines, not in the text, and then the text doesn't have to be super duper blatant and specific. It's mm -hmm. the things are there. If the intentions are there, they say that with acting too, it's very hard to do, I think. But with screen acting, if you know, as you're saying a line, if you are feeling it and you are thinking what's going on and reacting, whether or not you try to show it in your face doesn't matter it will appear in your face as long as yeah. it's happening internally it appears externally and that's the, almost kind of true with the text um mm -hmm. all yeah. this stuff can be just embedded you know what's funny is like i was uh i read it earlier you know of course he sent it to me and so yeah uh and then like, as we're doing it though, like I feel like something kind of starts to happen where I'm like, man, these are, I'm like, I'm channeling it in a way. Like I'm starting to take on a character or something. That's so cool. And That's I was so like, cool. I didn't like fully like, I mean, but still it was like, I don't know. It's I, wild. I, I, that was, is wild. It's really that fun. That can start to happen. Yeah. yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. I'm, this, I'm the guy that's like the straight man in this situation. I like it. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you. That was no. It, it is wild. It is wild. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah. And... Well, that was good. <laughs> oh, God. That's, um. I really, I, I mentioned that in an email, Patrick. I, I really, you know, I really want to encourage that among all our creative people out there that that's, um, it, it's, it's part of keeping the conversation open and maybe advancing some dialogue and ideas it can happen through through artistic means so much of what is the programming in the united states came from stories mm -hmm. um, you know there, there's a lot of stories that we either were taught explicitly or um or we just sort of took in the bible itself all it is is poetry and stories Mm -hmm. And it's so incredibly influential. And um, because they they can resonate these other chambers, almost like you're mentioning, like you start reading it and other things can yeah. start to happen. Yeah. It's really yeah. nice. 